It's no mystery. Each day, North Carolinians generate over 300 million gallons of sewage. That's 60 gallons per person per day. If this sewage or waste is not properly treated, problems can occur. Health problems like the spread of disease, environmental problems like the pollution of our ground and surface waters, and economic problems like the loss of a house sale because of a faulty sewage system. These public health, environmental, and economic concerns are addressed by proper treatment and disposal of sewage. In North Carolina, roughly 50% of our population is It's no mystery. Each day, North Carolinians generate over 300 million gallons of sewage. That's 60 gallons per person per day. If this sewage or waste is not properly treated, problems can occur. Health problems like the spread of disease, environmental problems like the pollution of our ground and surface waters, and economic problems like the loss of a house sale because of a faulty sewage system. These public health, environmental, and economic concerns are addressed by proper treatment and disposal of sewage. In North Carolina, roughly 50% of our population is served by septic tank systems. Because so much of our sewage is treated by septic tank systems instead of public wastewater facilities, it's critical that our state have effective rules covering septic tank systems. This video program will help you identify how a septic tank system works and some of the rules about installation and maintenance. First, let's take a look at how a septic tank system operates. Septic tank systems have three basic components, a tank, a distribution box, and a soil absorption field. Wastewater from the house enters the tank. Sewage stays in the tank for about two days where most of the solids settle to the bottom. Then the partially clarified sewage enters a box and is distributed through a pipe to the trenches of the absorption field. Sewage leaves the pipe through holes and is temporarily stored in small spaces created by gravel in the trenches until it moves into the soil. The sewage is then filtered by the soil. At the same time, chemical and biological changes occur which treat potentially harmful substances and organisms. The treated water then enters the groundwater system our primary source of drinking water. The septic tank system protects people's health in two ways. First, disease-causing organisms are treated below the ground surface where they cannot come into contact with people. Secondly, wastewater is treated before entering sources of drinking water. Environmental concerns are addressed by the adequate treatment of the sewage before it enters our ground and surface waters, which are used by people and wildlife. Septic tank systems have been around for some 200 years in North Carolina. Privies were frequently the norm. Other forms of sewage were piped directly to a ditch. Initially, the use of septic tank systems was regulated by local boards of health at the local level. It wasn't until 1973 that state regulation of septic tanks began with the Ground Absorption Act. Many local ordinances and the 1973 regulation required a percolation test of the soil to attempt to determine if it was suitable for a septic tank system. The percolation test was designed to give a crude measure of the soil's ability to absorb sewage. Unfortunately, the results varied too much to be reliable. For example, a site that was determined to be suitable using the perk test in the dry season might in fact be unsuitable for a septic tank system in the wet season. Studies from across the nation have shown that methods used by soil scientists are better than the PERC test. These methods have been used by the Soil Conservation Service and have proven reliable for over 50 years. On July the 1st, 1977, these proven methods of soil science were put into the state rules. And on July the 1st, 1982, the percolation test was eliminated from the rules. 
The methods now used to evaluate property have been relatively unchanged since that time. Although the rules were based on the work of soil scientists, many other groups had input. County commissioners, boards of health, home builders, engineers, county environmental health specialists, health directors, realtors, septic tank installers, and others were assigned to committees that developed the regulations. The input of these groups provided a balance of the rights of individuals to develop their property as they chose and the rights of the community to a safe, healthy environment. The rules provide a standard by which all sites can be evaluated objectively and fairly for all individuals. This provides protection of the public's health and environment for you and your neighbors. Today, each site is evaluated using soil science methods for eight important characteristics that determine if the property is suitable for installation of a septic tank system. These eight characteristics are topography, texture, structure, clay mineralogy, soil wetness conditions, restrictive horizons, soil depth, and available space. Let's take a closer look at each characteristic. First is topography. Topography is the study of the physical features of a region. This is important because flat or depressional sites can be too wet to absorb the sewage. Steep sites can make installation of a system nearly impossible. Texture is the amount of sand, silt, and clay in a soil. This influences the rate at which sewage is absorbed. This in turn determines the size of the system. Clay soils, which ribbon in your hand, generally require much larger systems because water moves through them slowly. Sand soils require smaller systems because they absorb sewage quickly but may not adequately treat the sewage. Sufficient distance to ground and surface water is critical and required for sandy soil locations. The hand texture method used by the environmental health specialist is the same as that used by the Soil Conservation Service for over 50 years. Structure relates to the way sand, silt, and clay particles stick to one another to form units in the soil. Cracks between these units can account for as much as 90% of the movement of water through the soil. If cracks are absent or destroyed, little or no water or sewage will move through the soil. Clay mineralogy looks at the type of clay in your soil. If the clay in the soil is the type which swells when wet, the soil will seal and not absorb the sewage. These are frequently called gumbo or bull tallow clays, but the correct term is clay with the expansive mineralogy and high shrink swell capacity. Soil wetness conditions are also a factor. If the soil is full of water, it does not have enough oxygen to properly treat the sewage. Wet soil, like a wet sponge, does not have enough pore space to absorb liquids from a septic tank system. Soils which are wet for even short periods of time will cause problems. These are called seasonally saturated soils. Another frequently used term is seasonally high water table. This condition is recognized by gray soil color even during dry summer months. This technique of identifying soil wetness condition is an accepted standard developed by the Soil Conservation Service and our universities. Another characteristic called restrictive horizons exists when chemicals hold the soil particles together like cement. This can cause a layer in the soil which prevents the free movement of sewage from a septic tank system. Common terms for such layers are hard pans and ironstone. Soil depth is a vertical measurement of the distance from the ground surface to rock or material such as marine clays. A conventional septic tank system requires three to four feet of suitable soil above rock in order to function properly. Available space is the final characteristic considered. Sufficient space must be available on the property for the initial septic tank system, repair system, house, driveway, and sometimes a well. When adjoining property has been developed, there must be sufficient distance from their wells, property lines, and structures to the septic tank system. Additional area may be needed if streams or other bodies of water border the property. A suitable area to repair or replace the septic tank system is required because even under the best of soil conditions, a system will eventually malfunction. 
sites that are suitable based on these eight characteristics enable a septic tank system to properly treat and dispose of the sewage. Once the site is evaluated and found to be suitable for a septic tank system, the environmental health specialist must lay out the best system for the site. Even the best design will not work if not properly installed. A qualified contractor is essential. Site disturbance must be minimized in order to preserve the ability of the soil to absorb sewage. For this reason, installation should not occur during wet periods when soil is easily disturbed. Once the system is in place, good landscaping encourages good performance of the system. Trees should not be planted too close to the system because roots will clog the lines. Final inspection of the system by the environmental health specialist assures a quality installation for the homeowner. Once a system is installed, how you use and maintain it will make a difference. Each system is designed by the environmental health specialist to handle a certain amount of sewage per day. It is important not to exceed the capacity of the system. Fixtures that use large amounts of water should be discouraged. Fixtures that leak should be repaired. Septic tank systems are not designed to treat large amounts of grease or large amounts of certain household chemicals. And garbage disposals will shorten the life of the system. Systems should not be driven over. It is important to maintain any septic tank system so that it can function properly. Maintenance includes pumping the tank every five years to prevent solids from leaving the system and clogging the trenches. A properly installed septic tank system works to protect your health, the health of the environment, and that most important investment, your home. The environmental health specialist, by way of evaluation, design, and inspection, has performed his or her job to see that the system is correctly sited and installed. By properly using and maintaining your septic tank system, you will be helping to ensure a health-filled life for all in the community.